you all out here this morning on this beautiful, beautiful, cool, crisp day. Y'all like my tie, by the way? Yes. <laughs> snow. Some, some people say it's a little early for snow, but uh, I don't know. I think we ought to let the people at home decide. You know, if you're at home and you can see this tie, it's got the snow, it's got snowmen, even got Santa Claus on it. So it's more for the snowman than Santa Claus. But uh, if you think it's too early or if it's just the right, let me know. All right. So, yeah, the snowshoe is called for snow. They got it this morning, but it's not late. Snow is snow. It don't matter. <laughs> so, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day. Well, we want to welcome everybody here in the sanctuary. We also want to welcome those who are worshiping from home. Uh, we just appreciate the, uh, you being with us today. We hope that you've taken time to get our bulletin. It has all the important information that we need in here. The bulletin is full uh, today. Uh, it's so full, I had to put uh, the, the extra stuff in the side, which those at home didn't get, but uh, uh, we'll explain that l later on. But uh, we want to uh, just welcome you all for joining us. Get a copy of your bulletin at tenertonumc.org or backslash worship and just go down and said the where it says get a click here for a bulletin uh download that and uh, you'll get the copy of our bulletin with all of our hymns that we will be singing at the congregation the words of that will be there with you also so that way you can participate and be a part of today's service so why uh, are people at home are uh getting their bulletins ready and stuff we're going to allow the choir to take over and uh, uh sing us a joyful song this morning choir thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us and the opportunity, Lord, that we can uh, worship you and uh, be able to uplift your name in praise and through song and through word. Lord, now we just want to lift up the many names that we have on our prayer list, many hearts uh, and souls, Lord, that need your touch. Many are in the hospitals and nursing homes. Some are at home or sick, it's not feeling well. Lord, we just ask that if it be your will, you lay your hands upon each one. Touch them, bless them, heal them. Give them peace, knowing that you are in their presence. Comfort the friends and families of each, Lord, that the, they have strength and courage to get through the, the illness at the, uh, of their loved ones. Now, Lord, we just ask that you touch us and guide us and direct us as we uh, go into the service this morning. Give us open hearts and open minds that we may be able to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. 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 <laughs> well, as you see, I changed the praise song this week. 
Uh, this one here is a little bit easier for us to sing, I do believe, than what it was last week. And we just had the wrong uh, uh, music to it. But Thy Word is at Lamp, page 601. <coughs> Oh, 
We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to gather as brothers and sisters to worship your holy name. We ask a blessing on all those in attendance and ask a blessing on any who could not be here. And now we ask a blessing on this offering that it may be used to build up your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And we will now hear from the choir. What is it worth today? <laughs> Oh, 
endorsements uh, uh, here on the back of your bulletin. I'm not going to do, um, I mean, you can read for yourself the October items for the month for the parish house. Um, uh, this uh, whole month is Sunday, Sunday. Um, uh, they, Lynn has um, said that what they are really in need of are, are um, children's underwear, um, young, young children, uh, and colorful, uh, even the character print uh, things that kids like are, are good. You can bring in anything, but these are areas that that are most in need, I think, right now. Is that correct, Lynn? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so remember that. And then uh, we will, have, there will this Wednesday be uh, choir practice and Bible study. And then we really want to get into next weekend and this week and the whole week, <laughs> really, uh, with, uh, with fall festival preparations and stuff. So uh, today technically is the last day to try to get your trash and treasure items in uh, uh, with that. And uh, is there a certain day that you're working on those again, Pam? Tuesday at 9 and Thursday at 9. Anybody who wants to still bring in things for trash and treasure and we'll start pricing them too. So if people want to come and help put okay. stickers on. So if you didn't hear that, Tuesday and Thursday morning, if you're available, you can come in and help price things. Uh, they've got pretty much everything unpacked, I think, right now. Uh, and then if you do have something that you found that you still want to donate, they'll take it on Tuesday or Thursday. And then come Friday evening, we need people down here to set up tents and uh, uh, set up the basement uh, dining area <laughs> and uh, other whatever other preparation might need to be going on. And then, of course, uh, Saturday, anybody uh, that can come, we'd appreciate it, even if it's for an hour or two hours. Candy's going to need help in the kitchen. We need cashiers in several different places. So if you can count money and just like to sit, <laughs> that'd be a job for you. Uh, uh, the, when you count money, you cannot take your shoes off, okay? <laughs> um, especially in the kitchen. So so we do need bags. And plastic bags. So I carried them all off last week. Okay. Yeah. So if you do have some ba plastic bags to donate, because mm -hmm. Kathy took them off to the parish house last week. And so we also need people that will just let people purchase items to put those things in the bags for people. So so We'll find a job for you one way or another. Everybody's help is needed, and uh, if you do have a Tinnerton shirt of some type or another, it'd be a good day, idea to wear it that day so that the people who are coming, if they need instruction, <laughs> they would know who to, uh, to, be, to find <laughs> for questions or answers or things like that. So, uh, any other information on Fall Festival today? Friday at 9 o'clock, we're making bread. Anybody wants to come in and help make bread? Okay, so Friday is bread making day, and uh, so if you want to help make bread, you can uh, do that. If anybody has any extra card tables that I could have in the basement to set up for people to sit down and eat on, you could bring them in. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> so if you didn't hear that, uh, card tables are needed for the dining area because all of our large tables are going to be loaded down with trash and treasure. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. What else we got? The four Sunday dinner, keep that in mind. Everybody try to come out because we will be honoring this man up here <laughs> uh, for past appreciation. Oh, uh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> now you, you might well, be sick because you know somebody's going to bring you something chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, bring cards and notes of appreciation or whatever for that that Sunday. Um, I want let him uh, take over uh, his little special insert here. In your bulletin, you found an insert that says uh, Tenor United Methodist Church, uh, Church Visitation Team. And you're probably saying, well, Pastor, we don't have a visitation team. You're right. Now I want to start one. Uh, one thing that I've struggled with all of my ministry is going out and visit people that need to be visited. I need your help. Uh, it's just impossible for me to get out as much as I need to and visit uh, everybody that's on our roster. And there's more on our roster than what shows up here on Sunday. So I'm asking for people to join together, get two or three together once or twice a month and go visit people that, uh, in our church and the community itself, you know, and report back to me uh, of their condition, you know, 
if they need, uh, if there's something seriously going on, they need a pastor to visit, let me know and say, Pastor, you really, really need to go see this person. All right. It's not that I'm not going to go out and visit, but the more that we go out uh, as a church, the more people get visited, the more people who uh, realize, hey, the church still loves us. So I need some volunteers that are willing to be on the visitation team and just to go out and do that. So we pre uh, appreciate anybody. If you'd like to be a part of that, just let me know. And uh, uh, you, we work around your schedule whenever you're available. You can go visit somebody. I'll uh, give you a, a copy of the, the list or whatnot to go visit. And uh, uh, go visit to see how they are. You don't have to spend all, all day there, but uh, go there, talk with them, pray with them, and uh, make sure you tell them that we love them. So there's a lot of us there. One thing I did forget on, we've been talking about trash and treasure, but we are, do have the bake sale as well. So make sure you're going through your recipes and get out your favorite things and things that people look for every year. And they come in asking for what they found the last year. So, so make sure that you do that. Because that's a big part of what we, money making that we do too is on that um, bake sale. The, the 20th is a spaghetti dinner. Uh, that benefits cross lines. It's going to be at the uh, First United Methodist Church <clears throat> from 5 to 7. I believe the, the, it's $10, I think it is, but the, the money benefits cross lines. Cross lines is a part of the parish house. So and, uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's a way to raise money to help the cross lines out, and uh, we appreciate the, you uh, supporting them by going there. Uh, the Tenerton Lions Club is having a hot dog sale here on Saturday the 21st. Uh, so it's another fundraiser for uh, the Lions Club uh, where you know we do these fundraisers to help people in the community. A lot of the, our help goes to uh, uh, site, uh, helping people get eye glasses and uh, doctor's appointments, stuff like that. And sometimes just a, a few other things that we do as well. Uh, scholarships for uh, kids at the, at the high school. Uh, so there's many, many, many different things that we do uh, as far as that, out, out here in the vestibule uh, on the coat rack on this side of the church is there's a big box up there for used eyeglasses. You know, we will take those used eyeglasses and we'll send them to, I believe, Virginia. Virginia cleans them up, do the, does what they do, do with them, and they send them literally overseas to uh, third world countries. Yes, uh, probably the Sunday before October 31st, uh, like to get some help and we'll just carry the sign up towards the front of the church and in the line so we can put the letters on it. So if you would next Sunday after church, uh, help bring the big sign out, we greatly appreciate it. So to help the club out. And uh, the fifth Sunday is this month, our hymn sing. So uh, if uh, you all want to sing a solo duet, and uh, if you could twist Rick and Kathy's arms and do that, that'd be great. Uh, so, or uh, Mike and Jerry, either one, or you know, I can go on down the list. Any one of them is more welcome to come up uh, and sing. Uh, we'll, we'll have our uh, hymn sing, plus, we'll be uh, making a special collection for the uh, Tyran uh, Cooper Parish. We'll be collecting uh, hand soap and gravy packs. So, uh, something simple. Uh, we'll take over and we'll take up a special love offering. You can give at any time this month for that if you'd like. Just write on the check, uh, just write it out to Tenerife United Methodist Church and write the Tyrene in the memo. And we'll know that's where it goes to. So, but on the fifth Sunday, we'll take a, a, an offering up for them as well. We appreciate your help. And I know, once again, that I've asked, yeah, yeah if you want to do cash, write it on the envelope, you know, Tyrene, that's fine too. But uh, I know that I've asked a lot, and like I've said before, do what you can. And that's all I can ask, do what you can. And uh, if you can do it all, great. If not, do what you can. Whatever you can do is great, we appreciate it. I, I think maybe we did forget one thing, because usually we have that line, a uh, big sign out there for coffee. I just thought about that too. So anyway, if, if uh, anybody wants to carry that up uh, today after church or Possibly. And then it could stay out for the following week for your thing. So, anyway. One more thing I forgot. <laughs> it's not on your bulletin, but it's very, 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 very important. Tomorrow night at six 
6 o'clock here in the sanctuary because the Joe's room is full and the basement's going to be a, uh, the Lions Club being a basement is our charge conference here at 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary tomorrow. If you're a church officer, you should be here. I'm not saying you have to be here, but you should be here. If you're a member of this church, uh, you're more than welcome to, uh, to uh, come and participate in, the, in vote. We are voting on next year's officers of the church, which everybody that has an email that I've get, uh, got uh, should have received a copy of the email and also a copy of my report and, and something else as well. I don't remember what it was, but hopefully you got that. But we'll be voting on officers and stuff so to be approved for next, next year. So 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Please be here. Okay. So we have our um, scripture reading. Um, it's from Exodus chapter 20. Uh, it skips around a little bit, so if you're following along in your Bible, you just uh, you can uh, follow the, the uh, verses there that are listed in your bulletin. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a, a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who make, takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall have labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is in your neighbors. Now all the people witnessed the thundering, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. They, then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. <laughs> Turn to your hymn book, page 467, and we'll sing Trust in the Baby. <laughs>
Just uh, real quick, I just want to uh, uh, let people who's worshiping from home and, uh, know that uh, this, even though we're live right now, it's also being recorded, and uh, our services are uh, takes a day or two for me to get get uh, to downloaded and uploaded to the right places. But we have a YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com and just type in Tenerton UNC, uh, you'll see our channel pop up. You can go there or on our website at tenertonumc.org. Top of the corner, it says all sermons. And you can get, uh, you can uh, watch our sermons from there. And be careful with uh, on that one there before you uh, uh, click play on the video just right below it. You can also download the, the, uh, our bulletin there as well. So we invite you to visit those sites. We do have issues at times with Wi-Fi here, which makes it sometimes hard to watch at home live. But if you're able to, to, to just wait a day or two and uh, go to the YouTube channel or our website, and you can watch the service without any uh, any problems with it. So we uh, appreciate you. Uh, uh, hope you take a uh, take that opportunity as well. So. Today we're going to be reading out the Gospel of Matthew, a familiar story that I'm sure we're all uh, uh, familiar with, the parable of the wicked vine dressers. And this is in chapter 21 of Matthew, starting at verse 33. <clears throat> Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now, when the vintage time drew near, he sent his servant to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. And again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and did likewise to them. Then, at the last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is their heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out into the vineyard to kill him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, we will do to the to those what we what will we do? What will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease their vineyards to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits of their session season. And Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? A stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on the stone will be broken, but whoever it falls, it will grind him into powder. Now when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. And when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude. Called, they took him for a prophet. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask you to open our hearts and open our minds and help us to understand the message you have for us this day. And Lord, I pray that the words I speak will be had the words that you have us to hear. Lord, just God and direct us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Vicki read. Uh, Select verses from Exodus chapter 20, the first 20 verses. And basically it's the Ten Commandments, which we all should be aware of, right? We all know them by heart, don't we? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but if we, if we pay attention to it and realize that uh, if the Ten Commandments, the way they're set up, the first four refer to God. And the last six refer to man how we are to treat and how we are to act among them. But God spoke these words to Moses many, many, many years ago. And they're still good for us today they, as they was the day that the, uh, God spoke them to Moses. And how do we know God spoke them? God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. And he goes on to say that we shall have no other gods before us. Now, good Christian people that we are, there is only one God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what does he mean, other gods? 
Dictionary.com tells us this, the definition of God. In Christianity, God means the creator and ruler of the universe and a source of all moral authority, the supreme being. That is what we believe. Is that right? Amen. That's the God that we serve. In other religions, okay, definition is a superhuman being of spirit worship as having power over nature or human fortunes, a deity, an image, an idol, an animal, or other object worship as divine or symbolizing a God. And the third definition is an adored, admired, or influential person. Now, out of those three, I would be willing to say that we believe the first one. Amen. But out of those three, do you not see uh, gods and the other two being worshipped? Mm -hmm. Images and idols. Uh, influential persons we see them being worshipped each and every day matter of fact that part of a, the class that I'm going to today is a theology class that I'm, that I'm taking and uh, part of it talks about uh, uh, conservatism and liberalism conservatism is the belief of one God that Jesus is the only way to salvation Liberalism, and this is, this is uh, discussed uh, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s through uh, the theologians and stuff like that. This is the, the definition that they polite, uh, put out. The liberalism is uh, believing that all religions are equal and that uh, there's different ways of salvation. Okay, well... Just to let you know how I, how I answered that and uh, talked about that in my in my paper that I wrote there just this past week is if uh, conservatism or being far left is believing that there's only one God and one way to salvation, then mark me down as conservative and as far as left as you can get. Amen. You know, until scriptures tell me differently and scripture says that Jesus is the way and the only way, until they tell me different, then that's the way I believe. Amen. But there's so many people today that believe that there is different ways of salvation. And there's different gods to worship. And God, he, he gave Moses that commandment for a reason. There is only one God. That's, that's the God that we, uh, we should work to. And he says that we should not make ourselves any carved images. We should uh, not use the Lord's name in vain. And we shall... Uh, honor the Sabbath, you know, and uh, uh, you've heard me talk about, or some uh, you've heard people say, "Well, the pastor stepped on my toes today." You know, well, when I talk about the Sabbath, I step on my own toes because uh, sometimes the Sabbath is hard to take at times. You know, but we are to take a Sabbath. You know, God worked six days, uh, uh, made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that's in them, and He rested on the Sabbath. We need our rest as well. And to honor God, we need to honor a day of Sabbath. The other six refer to man. How are we to treat one another? Honoring our parents. You know, and the simple, common sense things. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. Seems pretty simple, doesn't it? But out of those six, how many of you all broke this week? <clears throat> or broke already this morning? You know, it's sometimes it's the simple things that we, we fall short on. But God is specific in these laws that he gives us. I think that, that through these commandments or laws, God is reminding us that we are his children. And just like our parents gave us rules to follow, and just like we gave our children rules to follow, you know, they're there for a reason. To help us to get through the day, to protect us from harm. But think, in scripture it says, 
uh, especially if you read the King James itself, it says, thou shall not steal. Thou shall not murder. If we change thou and shall to you are, then the law uh, becomes a better reminder of who we are. You are people of one God. You are people who respect boundaries. You are people who value worship and giving honor to God. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you replace thou shall, and you say, you have no other God before me. You are not to take the name of the Lord God in vain. You are not to murder. You are not to commit adultery. You are not to steal. You are not to bear false witness, and you are not to covet. That brings it more personal. Amen. When, he's, when he says you, he points that finger at you instead of saying thou is everybody. But when, when, the, when God starts pointing finger and saying you, it gets a little personal, doesn't it? Amen. And that's what we need to get a little personal. But how do you think it feels when uh, to God when we worship other things or other people that we don't honor him? Because, believe it or not, we do that. Mm -hmm. God's a loving God, but I'm sure it hurts. Think about uh, what your children or grandchildren, when they disrespect you or uh, don't obey your rules. It hurts, doesn't it? It does hurt. That's, this is kind of where the, the parable of the tenants come with the, the Gospel of Matthew that I read here this morning. It talks about a landowner who prepared a vineyard and uh, he put a hedge around it. He dug a wine press and, and, and built a tower and, and leased it to vine dressers and he went off into a far country. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And what did he do? For six days he separated the, uh, the darkness from the light. He made the skies. He made the sea. He made the land. He made the plants and the people and the animals and all that is in it. And when he is done, you remember what he said? It is good. To me, the story of the vine dresser is the story of God. God is the vine dresser, and we are the ones that lease the land that God has given us. When the, the land over at harvest time has come, God, uh, the vine dresser, sent the uh, servants to the vine dressers to receive the fruits. Think about the Old Testament. The people God sent out to uh, to let them know that, hey, you're doing wrong or uh, you need to change things, you need to do this. Think of the, the prophets of old, Aaron, Abraham, Daniel, David, Elijah, Isaiah, and Amos, and go on down the list of the Old Testament prophets that God sent the tenants of the vineyard treated the landowner servants. They 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 uh, uh, they beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Think of all the, the servants that God has sent out. But what's what was done to them? And even after the landowner's uh, servants attacked them, he sent other servants. It says more than the first, and did likewise. Matthew, Mark. Luke, John, Paul, Titus. Go on down the list of the different people that God sent out into the world. And of all of the Jesus' disciples, if I'm correct, only one did not die a tragic death. Until one day, the land of decided to Send his only son. Thinking that they will respect my son. How do you think that turned out? God sent his only son, Jesus, 
walk this earth with us. To show us the way to how to treat people, how to talk to people, and how to act. And what happened? Jesus was scourged, beaten, spat upon, ultimately nailed to the cross. And just like the parable, the vine dresser saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. They nailed Jesus to the cross so that we could have salvation, that we could have everlasting life. Amen. Jesus telling this parable asked those who were listening, what do you think the vine dresser is going to do when he comes back? They said he'll destroy the wicked men miserably and lease their vineyards to other vineyards. Vine dresser, brother, who will render them for their season. And Jesus says, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Amen. Bad as I hate to say this, myself included, as being the vine dressers that we are. Think about the hurt that we've given to God because of denying Him, denying His commandments. We may not have literally nip, uh, drip, drip the nails in Jesus' hands, but every time we've committed a sin, every time that we uh, went against God's commandment, we nailed and hammered another nail into God's, into Jesus' hands again. This, this parable of the vineyard represents us today. Represents the world that we live in. Take a look at the world. Israel, God's chosen people, has been attacked. Guards are being placed in synagogues here in the country to protect them. Afraid of further attack here. Christians that we are are being attacked each and every day. We don't necessarily see it right here in our own community, but if you look out, it's there. Christians are being killed all over the world because of our belief in God. The vine dressers sees us coming. So here comes another one. We can get rid of that one. <clears throat> God speaks to us each and every day. Sometimes we get convicted of, of things we've said or done. And how, how, how do we react when God convicts us? Or tells us to take a risky step of going something that we're not sure of. And we step back and say, oh, I don't know, Lord. That's the pastor's job. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> true. It's not even true. You know, you know it's not necessarily a, you know, saying the pastor's job, but they're saying it's somebody else's job. Joe's good. I'll let him do it. Rick, Rick can handle it. He's got big shoulders. We hear that all the time. Ah, oh, somebody else will do it. And God's saying, but I chose you. Amen. I chose you. So what do we do this week and weeks to come 
to submit to God and obey his words. When we hear God speak to us in that small, soft voice that he has, say, would you pull over here and speak to that person on the street and pray with them? Pastors ask for a visitation team. Why don't you join that team? You know, sometimes you really, really, really got to listen. But if you're tuned in to God, you'll hear him loud and clear what he wants you to do. Today, tomorrow, next week, how can we show our appreciation to God for the goodness that he gives us each and every day? Because no matter how much we disobey, no matter how much we go against his will, he still loves you. He's still ready to accept you right into the family, forgive you from all the sins, whatever sin it may be. All you got to do is ask. Lord, forgive me. And I ask you today, if there's something on your heart, something that, that God has placed in your heart that, that makes you concerned about where you'll spend eternity, that the altar is where you come. And lay it down before God and say, God, Lord God, forgive me of my sins. Give me strength and courage to change for my current life and attitude to live in a life for you. And I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be something where God clicks his finger and it's done. Not that he couldn't do that. But the devil likes to have his part in to try to convince you otherwise. But if you remain faithful, if you remain faithful to God and his commandments, you will one day hear those words, welcome home, good and faithful servant. This I believe. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for your son Jesus who you sent to us over 2,000 years ago to guide us, to direct us, to show us the way. Now Lord, as many uh, shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And Lord, as many today still shouts the same word. Give us courage and give us strength to be able to stand up for what we believe, to be able to say that Jesus is my Lord. And Lord, where we fall short, forgive us. Help us walk at narrow path of righteousness for your holy and precious name's sake. That one day we will all hear those words that we're anxious to hear. Welcome home, good and faithful son. Guide us, dear Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. You turn to our closing hymn, page 398. Jesus calls us.
All hearts and minds at ease. Amen. Receive today's benediction. <clears throat> Go forth today as a people who bear the fruit of the kingdom, that in living in a life pattern after God's grace, you may share the hope, <laughs> the joy, and the love you receive from God with your neighbors wherever you go. Go in peace and serve the Lord. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Good day and God bless. Meet you down for the building.